This is a WNY News Now special report. I'm Justin Gould. New York's new female governor about to be sworn in during a special ceremony taking place at the state capitol today at 10 o'clock. Last night, uh, New York Governor Kathy Hochul officially taking the reins following what is an end of an era after former Governor Andrew Cuomo resigned amid sexual harassment allegations and the New York State Attorney General's report finding that he sexually harassed 11 women. These are photos from the lieutenant governor's private and official swearing-in ceremony. However, uh, in just a matter of minutes, the lieutenant governor uh, will take the stage for a more formal ceremony happening in the state capitol. This story gaining international attention amid this scandal involving Governor Cuomo, uh, which really has been playing out for the past six months. And as we have reported, uh, the governor at first really holding his ground, saying that he does not plan to resign. Um, however, just two weeks ago in what was expected unexpected for so many. Uh, Governor Cuomo announced that he would transition out of office for the best of New York. Now yesterday, if you remember, the governor held a farewell address where he uh, said that really the AG's report was a firecracker which ended uh, his tenure in Albany and still to this moment, even though he apologizes for the alleged behavior, he says that he is certainly not guilty of any of it. So we are waiting uh, for the live event to get underway there in Albany, where New York Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul uh, will be officially sworn in and ceremoniously sworn in as the state's first female governor. We still don't quite know who she will name as her lieutenant governor. However, the majority of folks uh, in political circles do feel that it will be a resident from downstate. Typically, when you look at a ticket for a uh, governor of a state as large as New York, uh, New York City definitely has a big factor. Uh, one of the big reasons why uh, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, uh, now Governor Kathy Hochul, uh, will uh, most likely need to name somebody from New York City. Uh, so we will likely see that today. Later this afternoon at 3 o'clock, the governor is expected to provide an address to New Yorkers. And it appears now um, some of her staffers are starting to enter the room uh, in Albany where the formal uh, transition of power and the swearing-in ceremony will take place. Uh, to note, uh, Governor, former Governor Cuomo uh, resigned just last night um, at this time in a, le a resignation letter just 12 hours ago. Uh, to the state assembly and senate uh, speaker. Uh, so that event should get underway here uh, in just a little bit uh, from Albany. The formal swearing in ceremony, uh, of course, uh, COVID-19 uh, precautions in place that you do see there. They, they do have masks on and uh, there is a, an expected a large amount of uh, media presence uh, taking place. Of course, this story uh, captivating uh, much of the world um, as we await uh, what will is New York Governor Kathy Hochul, uh, who was sworn in uh, last night, but now a more formal a ceremony uh, swearing in uh, going to be taking place here uh, in just a matter of minutes. And again, this story, and you look at Kathy Hochul's story, it really does ca uh, captivate a lot of people from here in western New York. A Buffalo area native, she has ties right here to Jamestown. And actually coming up uh, today on our News Now at Noon program, we'll be hearing from the city's mayor about his relationship with the lieutenant governor, now Governor Kathy Hochul, uh, and about what that could mean uh, for those here in Jamestown. And one of the big things that uh, she will need to be doing uh, is rebuilding public trust, the mayor says. And we'll be hearing from him directly coming up uh, in just a little bit. But otherwise, uh, now you see it looks like they are getting ready for the lieutenant uh, governor to uh, come into the room and take uh, her role as governor with a uh, official uh, ceremonial swearing in ceremony. Technically, she is uh, governor as of last night when they uh, 
did swear her in during a private ceremony. Uh, one of the big uh, things legally for the state is that they need a governor, and uh, hence why that took place last night uh, with her husband and some of her family. And then uh, this morning, a more formal event uh, will be taking place. So it uh, appears uh, more folks are uh, starting to come into the room, including Governor Hochul. Let's listen. And it doesn't look like uh, yet they've provided audio uh, for uh, the what is the pool feed, the switch feed, uh, but it uh, looks like there will be some remarks here uh, by those in the state capitol. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today with thanksgiving in our heart. The God of all grace, God that gave us the opportunity to, to be here even on this day to bless and to welcome our new governor. We come with thanksgiving in our heart. And then we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, the God that gives us all things well. We come with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you for gracious and faithful leadership in this great state of New York. We ask God your blessing upon them as we go through these treacherous times of our lives, that you will, oh God, just give them the wisdom and the wherewithal to have steady hands to know from you where to lead your people. We ask God your blessing upon this state and upon everyone that is concerned about you, oh God. We ask you to look on and bless and have your own way, only as you can do. Deliver us from this great task, covenant, God. We know you can do all things. You're able to open up the sea and the rivers that Joshua could go across. And we ask God you to do the same today. Open our way and give us safe paths that we can glorify you and that you'll be glorified in all that we do and say. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there you have it. Uh, New York State Governor Kathy Hochul officially sworn into office during a formal ceremony in Albany this morning. It looks like we may hear from the lieutenant go or from the governor. You'll soon find that brevity is the hallmark of my administration. Uh, uh, I also want to thank everyone for joining us this morning, and particularly uh, Chief Judge DeFiori, who graced me by wearing the same robe that was worn by 
the first female Court of Appeals judge, uh, Judith Case, so there is some symbolism in her attire this morning as well. Also, I want to thank Pastor Solomon Dees from Wilborn Temple for gracing us and reminding us of the presence of God here today. I've worshipped with him a number of times, and I wanted him to uh, bless this gathering and bless my administration. I also want to thank our leadership who's here today. Our Assembly Speaker, Carl Heasty, Majority Leader of the Senate, my great friend, Andre Stewart Cousins. We've been on a long journey together, and I so look forward to continuing the relationships that we've had, but even deepening it. So thank you, and I look forward to a conversation with you on the pressing issues of the day immediately following. And of course, my family, my beloved husband, Bill, who's been at my side for 37 years, my children, Will, Katie, and their beautiful spouses, wonderful people, Matt and Christina. I also have a large extended family here, so sorry to you in the back. I came from a big Irish Catholic family with six kids, but uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, my parents. My father is here representing, uh, in spirit, my mother. Uh, Dad, I'm so honored to see you and that you could make the journey here today as well as my siblings. So this is a, uh, an emotional moment for me, but it is one that I prepared for, and I'm so looking forward to continuing the work we have to do. Uh, to that end, I spoke with President Biden last night to talk about a number of issues. He pledged his full support to my administration in anything we need. Uh, particularly, I thanked him for the support we've received from FEMA and others in terms of cleaning up after uh, Henri and how we were prepared. And I'm going to continue assessing the situation. I do want to thank the people whose lives were disrupted, as well as those who responded, not just to that crisis, but those who continue to fight on the front lines as we fight this deadly pandemic. I also want to thank the uh, hundreds of thousands of state workers who I have such respect for, and I look forward to letting them know that I will represent them with my heart and soul as well. They are the face of government in many, many communities, and I have my utmost respect for all of them. So I just want to tell you, uh, briefly, I'll be sharing a number of my priorities with all of you, if you would reconvene again at 3 o'clock today. I'll be also talking about how we'll be combating COVID, getting direct aid to New Yorkers more quickly, and changing the culture of Albany. And that's why I'm looking forward to a fresh, collaborative approach. It's how I've always conducted myself. It'll be nothing new for me but it's something I'm planning on introducing to the state capitol. So I'll be heading to a meeting very shortly with our leaders here. We have much to discuss. We'll be reporting on that afterward. Uh, but at this time, I'll take a few questions. And let me call on Marina from AP right now. Marina. Do you think that there's another mechanism for people who want more accountability for former Governor Cuomo and appointing a special prosecutor? I'm going to leave that in the hands of the, uh, the assembly. They've been conducting themselves with great professionalism, and I'm going to allow the continuation of the separation of branches of government and allow them to do their work. Uh, Bernadette from the Post. Hi, Governor. Uh, thank you. I'm wondering, rent is obviously a massive issue right now in the state. What can be done to get more money out the door to the provision of approved applications quickly as fewer than a quarter of households are both rent burden and low income in New York City? Bernadette, you've hit on one of my top priorities. You'll be hearing more about that this afternoon, but it'll continue a, a multifaceted approach, deploying more people to the crisis, realizing that there's many people who have not been even aware that they have these resources available to them, and connecting them with the landlords. So I will be uh, assembling a, a team of individuals beginning today to assess this, but to wait not one second longer in terms of how we get this relief out to people. It's there. It needs to be in their hands so they can start getting their lives back in order and re reducing some of the incredible stress that these families and individuals are under. It's, it's un absolutely unnecessary. Uh, uh, Rami from Univision, and you here as well, Rami? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Well, we're doing quite a bit of reach out, and you'll be, I'll be identifying my administration, the members, uh, as time goes on. I've uh, requested and granted myself a 40-day, five-day transition period. 
I think everyone understands that I needed to assemble my two constitutional officers, officers immediately, which I have announced, and these are uh, incredible individuals with great integrity and a lot of government experience. I want people who know what they're doing surrounding me, and I'll listen to their advice. And so I have my, my secretary, Karen Keogh, has been identified, as well as Elizabeth Fine as counsel, but I believe in a, full, a fully diverse cabinet, and that is going to be a high priority. With respect to the excluded worker program, I'm going to go at that with the same intensity that I am with this rental program. The money's there. These people were not eligible for other forms of assistance, and they're hurting, and they're part of the New York family, and I'm going to make that very clear. So I'm making sure we deal with that. Uh, Bob McCarthy, Buffalo News. Good morning, Governor. Is there one particular project, one particular big thing that you would like to accomplish I want people to believe in their government again. It's important to me that people have faith. Our strength comes from the faith and the confidence of the people who put us in these offices. And I take that very seriously. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew from NBC4, please. Yes, Governor, thank you very much. You talked about the spirit of collaboration. I know you have spoken with Mayor de Blasio, but throughout the pandemic, the mayor and Governor Cuomo almost never appeared in the same room, despite the fact that their interests could have and should have been aligned. How soon can we expect to see you sitting at a joint news conference with Mayor de Blasio, and do you agree with his decision to mandate vaccines for teachers in New York City? Will you do that for teachers all across the state? I'll be making announcements about that uh, later today as well as uh, throughout the week because I have a chance to assemble all the stakeholders now that I am officially governor and I have the ability to work with them. I'll also be discussing this with our leadership from the Assembly and the Senate. This is what collaboration looks like. Uh, we, I have sat down unofficially with Mayor de Blasio. We had some very nice pastries last week and had a great conversation. And he actually called me prior to his announcement yesterday to alert me. And we talked about this era of cooperation, that there's be no blindsiding. There'll be just full cooperation because I need his best and bright, brightest integrated with my best and brightest. And that's how we'll get through this. And for me, that's just a simple approach. It's what I've always done. But if I can invite you back later this afternoon at 3 o'clock, I'll have a chance to address... Uh, more thoroughly the issues that were raised this morning as well as some of my other priorities. So thank you very much, and I appreciate everyone coming out today. All right, New York uh, Governor Kathy Hochul uh, officially sworn into office as the first female governor in the state of New York. Thanks for joining us for WNY News Now special coverage. Uh, well, coverage will continue on our website and mobile app, WNYNewsNow.com. And, of course, uh, coming up live today at noon on our network and on Channel 716, uh, we will provide you special noontime coverage during our News Now at Noon program. And then coming up at 3 o'clock, uh, we'll be back here to hear from the Lieutenant Governor in her, from the Governor in her first address as Governor. For WNY News Now, I'm Justin Gould. This has been a WNY News Now special report.